Hello everyone out there, this is Leave straight from Kalkine Studio. You're watching Go Green with Kalkine. Today let's dive in and discuss critical minerals for the clean energy sector. And please, if you like this information, like, share and comment on the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can press the bell icon for notifications for our latest videos. Also for regular updates and information, please log on to our website, kalkinemedia.com. Inputs, raw materials, supplies, call them what you like. But the most important thing is their adequate and timely supply to industries that use and rely on them. This supply chain has to be resilient to weather the impact of pandemics, geopolitical tensions and many more interruptions. The International Energy Agency, also known as the IEA, has released a new report. It highlights the significance of uninterrupted supply of critical minerals used by industries, including the electric vehicles industry and the wind turbine industry. The report unequivocally argues that supplies of these components need to pick up if the world's leaders really want to achieve their climate goals. Primarily, the IEA report focuses on mineral requirements for the world to transition smoothly to clean energy. Almost every industry, from solar and wind energy to electric vehicles to hydrogen fuel cells, needs these minerals. Let's talk about the EV industry first. Electric vehicles run on lithium ion batteries that can have chemical combinations like lithium iron phosphate or LFP or lithium nickel manganese cobate oxide or NMC. The study estimates that aggregate mineral demand from the electric vehicle sector will grow by 30 times between 2020 and 2040. The demand for nickel and lithium, the two most important minerals that go into EV battery production, will rise by 40 times between 2020 and 2040. The IEA study also considers alternative scenarios in order to assess how technological evolutions can shape the demand for different materials. For an example, the demand for nickel, for which demand is expected to multiply by 40 times, as I've mentioned, may rise by 140 times if the battery chemical composition NMC becomes more popular than LFP. When it comes to the solar power generation sector, the most encouraging element here is that the global solar PV photovoltaic capacity has increased almost 20 times over the past decade. The IEA study explores three alternative demand growths. In the case of cadmium telluride combination in solar PVs, the demand for cadmium and tellurium will grow by seven times by 2040. In the case of high perovskite, the demand for lead will grow by 45%. In the case of high gallium arsenide combination, imports like arsenic, indium and gallium will see their demand rise by 100% by 2040. Next is energy generation by wind turbines. Here, rare earth elements such as presidemium and neodymium will see a threefold rise in demand by 2040. Demand for other inputs including copper, zinc and aluminium will also increase. While world leaders including US President Joe Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau have committed to ambitious cuts in greenhouse gases and achieving net zero carbon emissions, a lot depends on how the world succeeds in producing and providing critical inputs that go into the production of electric vehicles and the equipment used in solar and wind energy sectors. Like I mentioned earlier, the production and supply chains have to be resilient enough to tide over tensions like geopolitical issues. That's all for now. I will be back soon with more shows around clean energy, renewables and climate change. Thank you for watching. I'm Leave for Kalkine.